while y'all in the clapping mood, I want y'all to put your hands together for my wife, yeah. who is here. You guys can say something else. Put your hands together for my pain. Yeah. Sexual yeah. chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. She is here. Amen. She yeah. is here. Amen. That's all right. Praise the Lord. I want you to put your fingers in the book of Mark, chapter 15. Until I get there, I got to give you my introduction. Amen. And then after that, I'm going to focus on a particular person. And then we're going to talk about you. Amen. All right. We're going to talk about you. And I have to deliver this thing the way the Lord gave it to me. I mean, it's just. Uh, you know, unusual words, unusual messages, but I have to try to do it the way he gave it to me. Is that all right? That's all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So bear with me as I get through my intro. Jesus shares a story of a man who goes down to Jericho and falls among thieves. How many know what that story is? Uh -huh. And he is brutally beaten and robbed. Amen? And I believe that story is shared because in that story, everyday people and the religious elite have an opportunity to identify with someone who has suffered at the hands of this world. Uh -huh. Yet those who seem to be righteous disregarded that man and the opportunity to help carry the load, All right. to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. See, no one has ever suffered more at the hands of this evil world than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not because of anything that he did, but he had to suffer because he was a substitute for the evil that we had done. Yeah. Yeah. But difficulty remains in finding those who will willingly take his yoke upon them and learn of him. He said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Amen. I will give you rest. And so there are people who will not willingly take this yoke. This yoke. Some people decide that the yoke they want to take is religious schooling. All right. They might want to take a missions trip, but a missions trip to Hawaii. All right. Uh, or they may think that they are doing God a service by taking a class in contemporary praise and worship. Go ahead. You see, for all the things that we consider worship to be in our minds, we simply could be running a race toward the perceived prize of our own spiritual race. All right. Amen. But the Bible tells us the race that we should be concerned about is the race that is set before us. And in that race, we can't take any shortcuts along the way. Amen. See, life's hurdles are there for us to jump over them. We can't run around them all of the time. All right. And sometimes these hurdles come at us so fast that all we can do is just try to leap over them. But what you can't always do is call a timeout. All right. Our life comes at us very quickly. And so what we have to do a lot of times uh, is not to just focus on the finish line, but we have to look beyond the finish line to focus on the prize that is in the winner's circle. How many know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason we have to do these things is because along this journey, we have weights that easily beset us. All right. We have sins. We have uh, different things that we have gotten uh, used to, habits. And so in this race, let us run the type of race that will have the cross before us and the world behind us. And so what we have to always remember is the sufferings of Christ. You touched on it earlier. We cannot forget the cross. Amen. When we look at Christmas today, it has become so commercialized. Amen. That uh, we don't even know uh, how the cross uh, got in it. How the cross is, is still in it today now. They don't talk about Jesus. So That's right. we cannot, as the church, forget about the cross. Let me tell you about the cross. The cross is the baton that we must grab from those, those believers who have gone on before us. Uh -huh. And we must take that baton and pass it on to the next generation of believers. Amen? Yeah. It's yeah. just like we run into the relay race. Yeah. And so when they run on to victory, it's just not their victory. But it's our shared victory. Amen. Uh -huh. There's a work that we have to do. We have to keep Christ in Christmas. There is a victory in identifying with suffering. 
especially the sufferings of Christ. Uh -huh. But as people tend to evade these opportunities to, to suffer with him time and time again, God has a solution for that. Yes. And it's called confrontation. All right. That's God's remedy. See, you can't run from God. Okay. There's a story in the Bible of where God confronted Moses. I don't know if you remember this story, but God had given him the sign of circumcision, but he did not immediately circumcise his son. And so uh -huh. what happened? God visited him. Uh -huh. Amen. Now, when you look at this story of the Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan got it right because what he had was mercy on a stranger. Right. And that stranger, I believe, is a picture of Christ who fell among the thieves of this world. All right. The Bible says, who is my brother? Amen. Yeah. The one who identifies with Jesus. Who is my brother? Jesus said, the one who does the will of my father in heaven. Unfortunately, unfortunately, though, for us, there are times when we are more concerned about with instead of the cross, we are concerned about crossing over to the other side of the road. All right. Because a lot of us don't want to deal with confrontation. A lot of us don't want to deal with conflict, and a lot of us certainly don't want to bear one another's burdens. Amen? All right. You know we don't want to get involved a lot of times when we see stuff going on. We don't want to complicate our lives. And so what happens is we miss out on an opportunity to share in the sufferings of Christ. Amen? Wow. And so the story that I want to share is an, it is an expansion See, I can't talk a little bit of this theme, amen? amen? An opportunity to identify with Jesus, even though we didn't expect it, amen? amen. And so when you go to Mark chapter 15, I want to start at verse 15 because I want to focus on this particular person. And then later on, I want to focus on you, amen? amen. And so it says, and then Pilate, willing to content the people, released the Barabbas unto them. And delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called the Praetorium. And they called together the whole band of soldiers. And they clothed Jesus with purple and planted a crown of thorns on his head. And they began to salute him and said, Hail to the king of the Jews. And the Bible says they smote him. And they hit him on the head with a reed. And they spit on him, Pastor. You touched on that earlier. He was all in it. And they bowed their knees to worship him. This is mocking him in verse 20. Then they took the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to be crucified. Verse 21 says, And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they, be, and they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they made him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garment and cast lots upon them that every man should take. It was about the third hour when they crucified him. Verse 26 said the accusation over him was the king of Jews. And in between him, they crucified Two thieves, amen, one on the left and one on the right. That the scripture might be fulfilled, he was numbered with the transgressions, amen? Mm -hmm. Amen, that's the Christmas story, y'all. And so if I could come up with a theme today, not your cross, an unexpected cross. Not your cross, an unexpected cross. And I want to focus on one verse. Verse 21 will be the meat of what I'm talking about today. Let's read it again. And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who was passing by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. First point I want you to take is God gives no explanations of his workings, no matter how jarring or shocking the situation you may find yourself in. Amen. I'm talking about an unexpected cross. Yeah. Amen. He didn't explain anything to Simon. Of the ten thousands of people who were on a pilgrimage into the Holy Land during Passover, this man was chosen. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God was in it. Amen? Amen. Surely he may have carried on as everyone else sent there to worship or to have a worship experience but somehow this man was brought face to face 
with worship himself. Yeah. No one exemplified worship or, or obedience to the will of the Father more than any other person than Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And it seems as if and in, in a whirlwind of time, God grabbed this man called Simon. And it was like he grabbed him by the back of his neck and had him look directly in the face of Jesus Christ. God Almighty. Eyeball to eyeball. Uh -huh. Face to bloody face. The Bible says that Jesus was marred beyond recognition. Ooh. And it was like he was looking right at him and he said, you take this cross uh -huh. for a while. Yeah. Take it yeah. to a place of death. Take it to the place of the skull. Yeah. No warning was given that this would be God's will for this man at this moment right now in time. And it was to be done in the midst of his daily routine. Yeah. The text says that he was minding his own business. He was passing by the situation. Yeah. And how many of us today like to run toward a fight? We like we when we see somebody fighting, oh Lord, there's a fight. Let's let's go over here and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. But this man was trying to pass by, going about his own business. Amen. Uh-huh. If that ain't a way to call, I don't know what is. He wasn't looking for a cross, but a cross found him. All right. The text says that they compelled him. What does compelled mean? What does compelled mean to a Roman soldier? It means grab this cross or I'm going to do something with this sword. It means suddenly, forcefully, take this cross. Now, when you look at the Bible, not much is talked about or preached about about this man. Neither do people spend a lot of time discussing him, but what they like to preach on is the two thieves on the cross. I've heard so many messages on that. And so today, if you let me use my imagination, I want to give you possibly some of the thoughts that he may have had in his mind. Mm -hmm. Thought number one, I didn't ask for this, an unexpected cross. Uh, this is overwhelming. Once again, I want to reiterate that there are some people who don't want to get involved. Amen? Uh, there are some people who feel as though uh, if, if there's something breaking out, I'm going the other direction. Surely he may have thought, I got a family at home, and I'm just trying to get home to see my family one more time. I want to see my babies one more time. I was trying to mind my own business after worshiping, and somehow God is forcing me to look at Jesus. How many times do we come in church, day after day, month after month, and never see Jesus? Praise God. We don't even expect to see him. We read the Bible, we pray, and we don't expect God to show up. All right. We don't expect him to move, but God came to him with a cross. Uh -huh. And so when an unexpected cross comes to your house, guess what? You're going to see God whether you want to see him or not. Or not. Go ahead, preach. And thank God because there are sometimes when you need to turn the plate over, when you need to turn the TV off because something major is going on. Great God. I want the animals to fast. I want everybody to fast. Yeah. And so he must have thought, what in the world have I gotten myself into? Am I participating in a murder? Huh? Uh, is there any way that I can get out of this? Surely he must have felt some pain and some alarm, amen? amen. He might have even soiled himself. Mm -hmm. But it was too late. It happened so fast that suddenly he didn't have time to think about it. All he, had to, all he could do was just act and do what they told him to do. Hurry up and take this cross because today Jesus Christ has to die for the sins of the world. All right, amen? amen. Point number two. You don't get to tell God when you are ready for a cross. Oh, I don't I'm, I'm talking about an unexpected cross, not your cross, because a lot of times uh, we think the cross is uh, uh, the, the, the cross that we are bearing is because somebody didn't talk to us in church that Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so I'm bearing the cross. But that's not the cross that God wants to give you. When you look at Romans chapter 16, we know from experience that the confrontation this man had with Christ impacted his life so much that he became saved. And not only he, his sons, Alexander and Rufus, which is right. in the text, 
Right. And it says in Romans 16 that his wife got saved. They were all members of the church. Amen. That's right. He also may have been involved in a revival that took place in uh, Antioch. Uh, it says that men that were identified as Syrian or from Cyprus ministered to Greeks and they preached the Lord Jesus to such a large number of people that all of these people turned to the Lord. And so the Jerusalem church had to send out Barnabas, amen, to go and confirm these disciples. That's in Acts chapter 11. And so this man's life was inextricably linked to the passion of the Christ. All right. How many remember that movie? Yes, sir. The Passion of the Christ. And his, and his, his life was linked to, to the passion and the Father's plan of redemption, of love. And not only that, it brought forth fruit mm -hmm. from his life. Amen. There's yeah. a lot of people that confess the Lord, but you never see any fruit. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so he shared in the fellowship of God's sufferings. And he took a small part in the joy of Christ fulfilling his mission. When you look at Hebrews chapter 2 and 10, it talks about Jesus and his mission. It says, for the joy... That was set before him, he endured the cross. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. And then if Jesus had to suffer, guess what? We're going to have to suffer. Amen? Yes, sir. We can't get around it. We can't, you know, try to jump over it. Huh? But there's, there's some joy in suffering. I'm going to talk to you about that today before All right. I close. All right. In a spiritual sense, because i got to touch on this, Simon was looking in the face of himself dying when he looked into the face of Jesus. All right. He was helping to put himself to death. Why? Because Jesus died in our place when it should have been us. All right. Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. When Simon carried that cross, he wasn't just helping Jesus on the surface. He was helping himself to build strength and endurance to carry his own personal cross later on. Amen. Yeah. He was also identifying with sin, the death of sin that would not be able to take over his life. He was leaving this old world behind, like old folks say. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, we don't like to talk about things like crucifying the flesh, mortifying the flesh, killing off the old man. We don't like to talk about that kind of stuff because we still have certain areas that we like to go to every now and then and, and, and take a sip. All right. All right. Huh? All right. Yeah. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, we like to use... Uh, our weaknesses as an excuse to indulge in the flesh. All right. Uh, you know, uh, you know, girl, I just love my black men so much that I just can't help it sometimes. I got to have it. one of them deacons over there at St. Paul. Go ahead, you know, though, because uh, they, you know, they show me looking good. You know, I, Go ahead. you know I'm weak in the flesh, right? You know I'm weak, right? <laughs> Sit on the front row. Wait a Sit on the front row. Go ahead. <laughs> We used to have some towels, some towels and some some cloths and stuff like that to for they can you know cover it up. Somebody's messed up. Oh, we need to we need to get that stuff back in. You, you may say, Deacon, uh, you talking about crucifixion and the cross? I thought you was gonna talk about jingle bells. Well, what if I'm fine where I am and I don't want to go through any more changes in my life? Then I would ask you this question. Did you ask God for his will to be done in your life? Uh -huh. Did You did? Uh, or are you just passing through like signs? All right. If you're passing through it. Because it don't matter. He still got a cross for you. All right. It don't matter if he chooses to apprehend you. Yeah. He chose to apprehend Paul on the road to Damascus. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. See, some of us have already experienced an unexpected cross All right. in our younger lives. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh, your mom might have died earlier. Your dad might have died earlier. So you were the head of the household. You had to quit school and you had to work and try to make ends meet. Him. Oh, yeah, you yeah. had to do all of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unexpected burden that might have robbed you of your childhood. But guess what? It was a cross that kept the family together. I'm sorry you had to go through that, but 
it was necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That love and mercy that God pulled out of you at a young age provided hope for them. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't your timing because it wasn't your cross. Right. It was his cross. Right. There's a blessing in the cross that he gives us. Amen. Yes. We have to learn how to change our mindset and, and begin to embrace these things that come upon us. We may not be able to uh, understand these dilemmas that we are faced with, but uh, when you are bearing the cross with somebody else, it will exponentially help you when your personal trial comes. It's going to help you, amen. When you look at this man, Simon, he didn't have the glamour and the glit that all the other disciples had, amen. They got to see arms and uh, 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 people raised from the dead. And they got to see all of these things, but guess what? He got to do the dirty work. All right. Uh-huh. When the time came, none of them was a rap. Uh-huh. It was him. Yeah. In the background, unseen. That's he right. was in the trenches, amen? Yeah. Enduring hardness and difficulty. And no one knew who he was, but God knew who he was. Uh, there may be some of you today that are silently carrying your unexpected crosses. And God sees you, and he knows you, and he is there for you. Uh, when none of the leaders could be found, he was there to help the Lord. I remember the prophet Isaiah said, Lord, send me. Mm -hmm. I'll go, Lord. Yeah. You may ask if Jesus needed help to carry his cross. How do I know that I won't crumble or fall under the weight or the pressure when my time comes? Okay. How do I know that God didn't pick the wrong person to put this on? Because we know that he won't put more on you. Then you can bear it. Yeah. Sometimes I feel inadequate. Sometimes I don't feel like I know enough of the Bible. But what we have to do is we have to remember these things. Remember that God knows what's best. Uh -huh. And that he is able to give us the strength that we need to endure. Yes. Remember that all we have to do is look to him. Remember. Remember his mercies. Be humble and seek him while he may be found. Yeah, yeah. But in your trial... Remember that the joy of the Lord must be your strength. Yes. We need to have joy because trouble don't last. Always. Always. We need to have joy because this too shall pass. Shall pass. Oh, yes, I've had some good days yeah, and I've had some hills to climb. Yes, sir. But when I look back over my life, uh -huh. I, my I good days outweigh yes. my bad days. I won't complain. Yes, sir. I have some good days. And I'm going to have some better days. Amen? Yes, Amen. But when you look at those days, you need to look at Jesus Christ also. Uh -huh. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, yes, yes. who for the joy, there it is, that was set before him, yes, sir. endured the cross. You got to have some joy while you're going through. Yes. Uh -huh. That means you got to think about how good he's been. Yes, yeah. yes sir. The joy that was set before him was being able to bring many sons into glory. Yes, sir. The joy that was set before him was going back to majesty on high and becoming a faithful high priest unto us right now. We yes. got some help in heaven, y'all. Yes. When you feel like you can't go through and you feel like you can't pray, Jesus is praying for us. Amen. Yes. 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 And that reality is manifested through the victory of his cross. Amen. On the cross, he said, it is finished. Uh -huh. I have completed the work. Yeah. Thank God for the cross. Yes, sir. I said, thank God for the cross. Yes. What reality will manifest for you through your victory of your own personal cross? Uh -huh. huh? What do you believe in God for? In the meantime, what is your attitude and what is your focus as you go through the Bible says your attitude should be counted all joy all right. when you fall into various trials and various temptations. Knowing that the testing of your faith work in patience. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete. Needed nothing. Huh? God is at work in our faith. You are sharing in the suffering that you might reign with him in power. You are taking up your cross daily that you might truly be a disciple of his. Sometimes in life we may feel as though something has come upon us that should never have come upon us in this life. 
But we must remember that the Lord God is sovereign. Yes. The Lord my God is sovereign. He yes, can sir. do whatever he wants to do. He is the potter and I am the clay. Yes, sir. Huh? But if we had a power, I presume we would like to have the power to go back in the past and change everything to make it the way we want it to be. Go ahead, huh? boy. But if we had that kind of power, the only reason we would use it would be to use it for our own selfish benefit. All right. right. Huh? To benefit our own ambitions. Uh -huh. But on the contrary, God's will and concerning the crosses that we bear often benefit those around us. I can get an amen. 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 It was quiet as a mouse on that one. Amen. You're going through not because of you. You're going through to help Mary Lou. You're going through to help somebody else. Paul said the same comfort that I have, I'm able to comfort somebody else. That's right. That's right. That's God's will and desire for us. Amen. I can't tell and encourage you if I ain't never been through nothing. God's will and the crosses we bear often benefit those around us. Yes, sir. They see that God is doing something in you because you was able to stand. Having done all to stand, you stood there for it. Having your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yes, sir. You were able to stand. Amen. That's what I want to see if I'm, a, if I'm an unbeliever. I want to see you standing for God. I ain't going to come to your God if you, if you all broke down all the time. Why do matter? Go ahead, boy. Hindsight is 2020. Huh? If hindsight is 2020, then future sights should always have Jesus clearly as our focus. Yes, sir. And we can't depend on our eyes. We need to trust in his eyes. Uh -huh. He is the perfecter of our faith no matter what he allows to come to us in our lives. Yeah. He sees that if there is no cross, there's no perfection. Uh -huh. If there's no cross in our life, there's no maturity. Yes. If there's no cross, no there's no resurrection. That's right. Job questioned whether or not we had faith that would still allow us to worship God when an unexpected cross comes in our lives. Uh -huh. He asked the question, shall we serve God only? In the good times. All right. For the good times. Go ahead, boy. Go ahead, boy. Go ahead. We only going to serve God in the good times. Is that the type of faith that you have? You might as well curse God and die. But Job said, I will bless the Lord. Amen. For God I live and for God I die. God take it and he give it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Worship. Huh? That's what it is. We seem to think that we are carrying a cross uh -huh. when people won't say hello to you in the church. I know he saw me. Not your cross. Uh -huh. You don't get to shop for your next trial or tribulation to try it on first and see if it fits. You don't get to decide what comes into your life. Go ahead. Listen, from the moment that Paul was called into salvation in the book of Acts, the Lord said to Ananias that Paul would suffer greatly for his said. name's sake. That's what he said. I want him to see how much he's going to suffer. That's what he told him. He, he dished it out, but was he able to take it? All right. Uh, he was a mercenary. He was a hit man yeah, for yeah, the Sanhedrin. Yeah. That's what he was. Uh, that, yes, he was. Oh, was. Kill you for money. Oh, my. And so the only way that he was able to bear this kind of load this time is he had some friends. Paul had a lot of friends, amen? amen. And he had the Lord to help him to carry the load. Uh, an unexpected cross. Mm -hmm. He had another one, a thorn in the flesh. All right. Paul said, it came to him in the form of a messenger of Satan, uh -huh. always buffeting him. Every time he turned around, this thing was, was attacking him. And he found out that lest he be exalted above measure because of all the abundance of revelations that he was getting from God, he said that this thing was a sign to him. Wow. And God would not take it away, but God admonished him that his grace was sufficient. Great God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes, sir. His grace 
uh -huh. will help you to endure. Yes, will. His grace right. will help you to stay humble. Yes, His will. grace will help you to see God's mercy. Yes, sir. Therefore, he, Paul said, I would rather glory in my infirmities and weaknesses uh -huh. that the power of Christ might be manifested in my body. Right. That it yeah. might be magnified. What power of Christ is he talking about? He's talking about the cross. Uh -huh. God will cause us to triumph when we trust in his power. Not your cross, but his cross. Amen? Uh -huh. Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Uh, not a dead sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. One translation says, in view of God's mercies. Amen? In view of God's mercies, we understand that we are not consumed because of what he did for us on the cross. Uh -huh. He brought peace between God and man. Yes, sir. Every day we wake up with brand new mercies. Yes. Not the mercies of old, uh -huh. but brand new every day. Because every day. things could be a lot worse. That's right. In view of God's mercies, we should understand that we are no better than anyone else. All right. And the church is not better than Israel. All right. The church has not taken over the place of God's people. Uh -huh. We have been engrafted in. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Read yeah. Romans 11. Yeah. Because a lot of times we preach from Romans 12, but we never go back and see, therefore, what is there for. Uh -huh. He was dealing with this issue of spiritual pride. Uh -huh. We are supposed to provoke them to jealousy by our worship. Yes, sir. Yeah. By how we deal with the struggles of life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be an example not only to Israel, but to the world. In view of God's mercies toward the church. Yeah. What are we doing with his mercies, church? What are we doing with it? Are we sitting on God's grace and in his mercies? Are we productive for the kingdom of God? All right. How do we endure? Remembering that he will strengthen us when we think about all that he's done for us. All we have to do is trust in him. Be humble and keep this in view. Titus 3 and 5, it says that he saved us not because of our own works of righteousness, but because of his mercy. Uh -huh. All of our righteousness at best is filthy rags before him. The boy said at best. At best. And so our reasonable service is to present our bodies to him. We can't do nothing else. Amen. Amen. That's what he requires. When you look at Micah 6 and 8, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love kindness and mercy, to humble yourself, mm -hmm. and to walk humbly with the Lord your God. What does God require? Not much. Not much. Love what is good. Do right. Treat people right. Love your fellow man. Be merciful because God had mercy to you. Uh -huh. And walk humbly. Remember the Lord your God and to seek him. Sometimes all we need to say to the Lord's will is yes, 